Hey, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh, and this is Alex. Hey, guys. And uh, today we're going to be talking about batteries. Yeah, you don't want to leave uh, LiPos in your car or charging when you're not home. And you know what? I get I get picked on a lot because I fly puffy batteries. Yes, you do. And we've had our experience of LiPo fires lately, and we've learned a lot from that. But they actually haven't always been from puffy batteries. They've been from unbalanced batteries. Unbalanced or uh, improper charging. You dial in the wrong settings on your charger. Wrong voltage. Um, and it just yeah, them overcharge is the number one cause of lipos actually exploding and, and uh, into flames too. Into flames, mm -hmm. and we really want to talk to you about that because you know there's some precautions you can make, but also we, we've covered some of these tips in the past with uh, with our beginner series. Yeah, and also experienced mm -hmm. them firsthand, like in the uh, speed challenge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which that one didn't catch fire, luckily, but it was smoking quite it a bit. It smoked really good, and that actually happens quite common. And when you go straight down to the ground, that battery runs right into that back shaft of that motor, and it shorts it out, punctures yeah. it, and releases the magical smoke. So today we're going to actually show you uh, some precautions you can make uh, very economically. Mm -hmm. This is also something clubs can do to, to keep the pavilions and keep the area safe. So when the massive amounts of people are charging, they can be safe. Yes. All right. So you know what? One of the things I want to show you here is uh, this is a typical puff battery. And you think that would be ready to explode, right? Yeah. But actually this battery here is probably closer than this one here. Yes. And the way we figured this out, and if you guys don't have one of these, I strongly recommend getting. There's lots of different analyzers you can get. This is from Hobby King. We've been using this for years now. And it's the HK010. It's phenomenal. Uh, 20 bucks. And I'm gonna plug this in here. Now one of the cool things is when you go here and you hit LiPo check, it's immediately giving us a warning that it's actually unbalanced. Why is that so important? What happens, as you can see actually here, there's almost nine tenths of a volt between the highest and lowest. When this tries to get up to the magical number, since it's a three cell, that'd be 12.6, it's gonna overcharge two of the cells trying to bring it up to 12.6. That last cell trying to bring that last cell up. Exactly, so it's gonna try to bring them all up there, and that's mainly charging off of a just the plug only, not the balance connector. Yes. When you have a balance connector in there, it'll analyze that and hopefully bring that one up, but you always wanna keep an eye on that and check it every flight. Um, if you're just charging off the plugs, that's when most likely you're gonna have your fires mm -hmm. and uh, have some serious problems. So basically, a good tip is to balance whenever you can. Yeah. I'd say the only benefit of just charging straight off the plug, yeah. um, not balanced, but just straight up charging is if you're in a time crunch and you need to charge it a little bit quicker because it is a little bit faster, right? Yes. But yeah. it's it's, a, it's more unsafe. Now charging using LiPo bags is a, is a very important thing. Yes. It's very important. Um, you're not going to get the level of protection and sometimes if you have too much battery in here, mm -hmm. you're still going to have some issues. This gives you a level of protection, but it's mainly for travel and security. Yeah. Uh, there's and, some better ways. And normally too, you, only, you don't want to put all your batteries in here and charge them all at once. Ideally, you'd want one bag for each battery. Yes. Um, so like this one's pretty big, so you can maybe fit two in there. Yeah, this but, is from Team Black Sheep. It's awesome. Yeah, Trappy right. actually gave that to yeah, us. Yeah, one of the best, best LiPo bags I've seen. Mm -hmm. And it even has instructions for uh, carrying carrying on the plane, because you can take LiPos yeah. on a plane, you just have to be very safe and you got to follow the procedures to yes. do it properly. And always look up online before you go ahead and package it. Sometimes laws have changed. Because oftentimes it's a matter of covering these connectors here so it can internally short, having it in a LiPo bag. And uh, Trappy did a great job actually putting the law right on the back of this, mm -hmm. which helps to get through with no problems. Um, but charging at home is very important and you want to do it safely. No one yeah. wants to get hurt. And we're going to show you how for 20 bucks in about 10 minutes of time, you can make a great LiPo charging station or a battery bunker. Yeah, well actually before we talk about our new battery bunker, we yeah. should talk about our old one. You may have seen it in the videos like the Flight Test Headquarters Tour. Don't do it. Um, it's not a very safe setup. We can't. We don't yeah. recommend doing that at all. We were a bad example. We found out that out the hard way when we actually had a fire uh, with that in lower case. And where the fault was is we actually, we were smart. We put a fire alarm above the charging area in that actual uh, Yeah, which cavity. was lucky because that's the, that's the only reason actually Brian, the camera guy, yeah. was the one who, who, who saw it. Yeah, and we had it outside. We had a fire extinguisher handy. We got mm -hmm. it put out, but um, that whole toolbox was hot and above the fire in the charging area, that's where we kept all the charged batteries yes. and all the good batteries. Um, so it was so not a very good setup. We do not recommend it If this long enough, yeah, it would have caught those on fire and the whole thing would have went up. So now today you actually made us a new uh, charging, what do you yes. call it, the battery bunker. Battery bunker. How yeah. much did it cost you? About 20 bucks. 20 well, bucks. What I did is I went to Lowe's and I bought one sheet of two by four hardy backer board. That's cement board and you can cut it with a utility knife. It has nice little score grooves on there. And then I bought six thin wall, uh, box mm -hmm. and all I simply had to do was make a perimeter put my charging station I put the DC power supply on the outside because the DC power supply does get hot after a while yeah. you don't want it to get too hot and wear it out and kill it early yeah and then just simply made a lid for it uh, on top so you of fit that, the whole charger and everything right inside the charger everything is on the inside the nice thing about that is you can use your balance cables and God forbid you do have a fire you do have a chance of ruining your charger but with being able to use those balance cords and mm -hmm. the balance cables you're far less likely to have that fire issue in the beginning so I'd rather sacrifice a charger than, than have it on the outside yeah. and have a lot more frequent chance of a fire 
uh, than, than vice versa. But one step further, we also put a little tiny fire detector on the very top of it. Mm -hmm. So if you start getting a smoke raising up, you instantly know. You know, yeah. Yep. Now below that, I keep a bucket of sand and also a fire extinguisher below mm -hmm. that table. And that's separate from our charge battery. So we're only gonna have, the fire source is only gonna be the number of batteries, which is up to four in this case, that we're actually charging. Yeah, I think it would be a good tip to always keep your extra batteries, your charge batteries, away from your charging batteries. Yes. Have the charging station be something completely separate. Yep. I strongly encourage a lot of clubs, if you don't have some kind of battery bunker, some charge station, with a way to extinguish batteries, where everyone can go. If you have a common area where everyone can charge their batteries, safely it's a lot less likely to have fires where everyone's just charging out of the cars and you have a lot of remote yeah. little hazards it's better to put it all together in a safe yeah. environment 20 30 or even 40 bucks it goes a long way and also keep some salt water in a bucket handy yes. too that's a natural way to discharge your batteries and if god forbid you do have a fire make sure you have that sand ready to put it on top of the on top of the unit mm -hmm. it'll completely extinguish it we want to give some major shout outs to a couple people mm -hmm. uh, one is i pete pete yeah did i say that right i pete pete i think that's it yeah uh, from flighttest.com he made an amazing article actually using what you use a lot yeah these, which is uh, your ammo can yeah and actually you can get these from like army surplus stores and also even walmart sells them they sell brand new surplus um, and I think it was like 10 bucks, maybe 15 bucks. Yeah. But even this one, which is the smaller of the two, um, we also have this size here. That's for 50 calories. I believe so, yeah. But, <laughs> but they both work really well, and they, uh, even this one holds, I mean, more than enough yeah. batteries to yeah. take to the field. And they work good for storage, and uh, actually, I Pete Pete used it for charging, right? Yeah, he actually strapped the uh, charger right on the side there, ran his leads inside, so all he had to do was connect it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's phenomenal, because even though the pressure's gonna release, the flames will have a very hard time doing it. So you're gonna be in a lot better shape if, God forbid, you do have an overcharge situation and it does uh, catch fire. Yeah, and if for some reason you just say you have uh, big six cell batteries or something, you need something a little bit bigger, we've also found that all metal uh, toolboxes yes. from just your hardware store, yep. just a generic toolbox works really well too. And we use that in the past. Um, and also another big shout out to utahflyers.org. Uh, they have numerous videos. I strongly encourage you to go check out their videos on different lipo fires, but they were the ones that inspired us to use cinder blocks yes. and sandbags. Yeah. Now that's a phenomenal setup. And uh, what they did is they actually placed their cinder blocks on its side, put the battery down in the pockets, and then ran their leads out and then put a bag of sand over it. Well, the neat thing is if God forbid you have a fire, it's gonna melt that bag and the sand's gonna flood that cavity yep. and put out the fire. And uh, that is one thing, a lot of people think having a fire extinguisher will put out a lipo fire. It's much more difficult to put a lipo fire out with an extinguisher than simple play sand. Uh, sand dumped right over top, smothers mm -hmm. it out, it's out in minutes. But always keep a fire extinguisher handy because if it catches anything else on fire, that's when you're gonna need it. Cool. All right. Well, we wanna thank you guys for watching and uh, thank you for supporting us. Every time you go to the store, buy a speed build yeah. kit or a rotor bones kit, uh, you're helping us do what we do. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. I yeah. uh, hope to see you guys at Flight Fest. Again, that's at the end of July, July yeah. 24th to the 28th. And if um, you haven't already subscribed, please, uh, what, where's the gremlin? Uh, I, I don't know. It's in one of the, the other The gremlin's corners. everywhere. If you, you, you gotta watch out for it. Click on the gremlin and uh, subscribe. That way you always know new content. New out. episodes every Monday and Wednesday. It's something that we constantly do every yeah. week of and every month of every year. Thank you for the great articles too. Uh, Lipo Safety, that wonderful great article. Um, you guys are, are the community that's making this knowledge available and I appreciate it. Alrighty guys. I'll see you next time. See ya.